So you want to be a pyramid head player, huh? Well, you came to the right place. Hopefully, after watching this video, you'll go from this to this. So welcome in, guys. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. Uh, my name is BlueJoom47, and today I am going to be showing you uh, how to play Pyramid Head. Uh, Pyramid Head is a killer that I've sunk many hours into, and he's one of my favorite killers to play. Uh, and this has been a video that's been highly requested, so we're going to get right into it. I'm going to show you guys everything that you need to know, and just about everything that uh, will help you get on your way. So Pyramid Head is a killer that was introduced from the Silent Hill series. He was first introduced in the second game in the series and has become a, became a reoccurring character in some of the games and a lot of the movies. Uh, but I'm sure you know that unless... Number one, perks. So, Pyramid Head is a killer that doesn't have a lot of mobility. Uh, he cannot get around the map very quickly. Um, and because of this, um, I highly recommend bringing in at least one information perk. Now, this can be anything like Discordance, uh, Barbecue and Chili, um, Tinkerer, uh, Floods of Rage is an option as well, uh, a new perk, Darkness Revealed, anything that will let you know where survivors are um, to help you so you don't get lost, um, or that you're not wasting your time. Jens will go pretty quickly because of his, because of his lack of mobility. Uh, so you're going to want to bring at least one gen regression or gen blocking perk. At least one or two. Um, I'm not going to go into huge detail about specific builds. Uh, I will give you a good starting build and I will give you a good uh, general build once you've kind of learned his power and stuff like that. So something like this is a good general build to start with. Uh, you have I'm All Ears. I'm All Ears is a perk that I highly recommend starting with because when a survivor vaults a window or performs a rush, a rushed action, um, their aura will, will be revealed for six seconds. So ideally what will happen is a survivor vaults a window goes around a wall, you can see their aura, and you use your power to down them. Um, I highly recommend I'm All Ears to start. It's a great, great perk to help you learn your power and to learn uh, how to hit people through walls, but we're going to get more into that later. I highly recommend I'm All Ears to start with. Um, Ruin, Undying, not a whole lot I need to say about that. It's, it's just good... Uh, gen regression, um, really nice quality of life uh, as a killer. Um, Tinker is another really good perk on him. Um, when a when a generator is repaired to seventy percent, uh, it'll trigger a loud noise notification, and you'll be granted undetectable. So, Tinker goes off. You know where the survivors are. Uh, you have undetectable, so you can kind of creep up, and if you, they're behind a wall, you can send off a shot, which uh, I really like this perk because you can often catch survivors uh, off guard with a shot through the wall while they're on a gen, and uh, I've had some really awesome moments with Tinker. It is getting a bit of a nerf going forward, but generally, it's a, it's a good choice. So... I'm not going to go too, too much into perks. Um, there's a lot of perks that you can run, and a lot of different Pyramid Head players run different things. Um, but generally, like I said, you're going to want information and regression or gen blocking or both. Um, this is a build that I've been using frequently, uh, Discordance. Discordance is a very valuable perk. Um, 
especially on a killer like Pyramid Head. When two, two or more survivors are on a gen, it'll trigger a loud noise notification and the gen will be highlighted yellow. Um, so knowing that two survivors are in one location is huge uh, because you know that at least two of them are going to be there. Um, so very valuable perk, especially on Pyramid Head, uh, who doesn't have that map mobility. Uh, Deadlock is a good quality of life perk. It blocks generators. Uh, the generator with the most progress will be blocked for 30 seconds. Very valuable, but it also gives you a bit of information because it'll tell you the gen with the most progress will be highlighted in white. Uh, so that's a, a very valuable perk. I really like it. Um, we also have Pain Resonance. Now, I want to go into detail about um, perks that revolve around hooks. So, if, as Pyramid Head, you have the ability to cage survivors. When a survivor is tormented with your power, they will, you have the ability, once you down them, to send them in a cage. Once you cage them, they will be sent across the map, um, generally the farthest location from you the the cage will spawn by having the ability to cage survivors sometimes you will be putting yourself at a disadvantage if you're running hook perks uh perks like scourge hook pain resonance perks like uh pop goes the weasel perks like floods of rage so if you are going to run hook related perks barbecue and chili is another one you're gonna want to be careful you're gonna want to save the torment that you have on survivors and hook and get as much value from your hook perks uh as early as you can um just yeah you're, you're gonna want to have a bit of restraint if you are running hook perks and i don't recommend running a full build based on hook perks you will be putting yourself at a disadvantage if you are going to cage survivors, which as a Pyramid Head player, you should be doing that. Again, because of the changing meta, um, Behavior has announced that they're going to be changing a lot of the perks in the game. Um, I'm not gonna go too, too into detail about what perks you should run, uh, specifically like what builds. Again, like this is a generally, generally a good build, but you're going to want to mix it up and, and find something that works best for you. Something that, uh, that you know, caters to your play style and, and helps you out the most depending on how you play. Understanding your power. So, Pyramid Head is a killer who has uh, several different kind of abilities. Um, number one, Rites of Judgment. So hold the power button to activate, then move in any direction to carve a trail in the ground. Survivors who walk or run on the trail will trigger killer instinct and be afflicted with torment. Survivors affected by torment may be sent to a cage of atonement while they are in the dying state. So you leave trails and naturally they will stay in the trial for I think about 60 seconds, something like that. Um, so as you're going around the map, you you can leave you can leave trails around, and you know hopefully survivors will walk into it. Most of the time they won't just on their own. Survivors do have the ability to crouch and walk through them safely without being tormented. So keep that in mind as well. Um, but uh, something you can do is when as you're traversing across the map. You can just leave trails, typically under pallets, um, near doorways, things, places where survivors have to go through um, if you if they are in chase with you. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, his special attack is Punishment of the Damned. So press the attack button while R Rites of Judgment M2 is active to perform Punishment of the Damned. This unleashes a wave of force, damaging any survivor in its path. So, you have a ranged ability. Um, the, the default distance of that 
is about eight meters, I believe. Pyramid Head has a ranged attack similar to any of the other ranged killers, such as, you know, Huntress, uh, Deathslinger, um, you know, the Clown, I guess. Uh, you, you know what I mean. Um, but his range attack does vary a lot from the other ranged killers. It is slower. Um, it is harder to land a, a prediction shot. Uh, significantly more than Huntress, who throws hatchets very quickly, it comes out a bit slower than the other guys. Um, but you have the advantage of being able to shoot through walls. So, um, it kind of works out that way. Um, also, a bit of technicality, Pyramid Head's uh, Punishment of the Damned rolls out it rolls out like this like it rolls out right similarly to a piano being played like sliding uh, across a piano something you need to understand about that is that a survivor who is at the end of your range attack can move out of the way but a survivor who is closer will have less time to react so a survivor who's right in front of you uh, won't always have time to move out of the way, but a survivor who is further away will have more time to step out of the way. Something you should also understand about this power is that you cannot shoot upstairs, you cannot shoot across gaps, you can, however, shoot downstairs and downhills. So that's something that you should really understand when you're standing at, let's say, the, the top of the stairs in Shack, and a survivor is in the basement. You can stand at the top of the stairs and shoot down. Um, so that's something that you should really understand and, and keep that in mind as you're learning. You can't shoot up, you shan't, can't shoot across, you can shoot down, and you can shoot through walls. So something you should really understand. And, and keep that in mind because you will be able to use this to your advantage um, if a survivor if you're chasing a survivor and they go downstairs shoot if they're going up the stairs don't shoot uh, if they're going across a gap and don't shoot you know um, so the next special ability uh, that Pyramid Head has is the Cage of Atonement. So when a survivor is inflicted with torment via running through your trails, uh, they will have barbed wire come all over them and on their screen, and uh, they will be tormented. Torment doesn't do anything to them other than the UI effect and the little trail of barbed wire that they leave behind. Um, the biggest thing about this, though, is that you will now be able to send them to a Cage of Atonement once they, uh, once you have downed them. So, when should you cage and when should you not cage? A lot of that relies on perks that you have. If you're running a, a hook perk, you're going to want to wait to cage. You're going to want to save that. A strategy that you can employ is to save your torment because a lot of the times you survivors will hold W and they will avoid being tormented as much as they possibly can. Um, so you might only have one chance to torment survivors. A really good team will remain un, you know, little torment Maybe you'll get one too, but the rest of them will be smart and, you know, you won't always get torment on them. So it is a good idea and sometimes a very viable strategy to save your torment on survivors until they are dead on hook. So when a survivor is dead on hook, you will not send them to a cage to die. When they are dead on hook, and they are tormented and you down them, you now have the ability to perform Final Judgment. Final Judgment is a Mori 
uh, it is a, a mini Mori, similar to uh, the Onryo, um, who has a similar ability. Um, basically, it is like a Mori, but much quicker. You can kill a survivor by your hand um, a lot quicker than a normal Mori, and a lot quicker than a normal Hook. So, it is a very viable strategy to save a survivor's torment and hook them until they are dead on hook and you have the ability to <laughs> final judgment now a little uh, a little more about uh torment when a survivor is tormented they leave behind a small little trail of barbed wire that comes out of the ground this in my experience has been really nice because sometimes, especially when a survivor is running Iron Will, uh, or they're just extra sneaky, you can often see them much more easy, much more easily, because they're tormented. It can really, really, really help. Um, so, something to keep in mind there. Another reason to maybe save, uh, save a survivor's torment. Now... Another strategy that I would like to talk about is tunneling. Um, Pyramid Head is a killer that has the ability to send survivors off to a cage. When a survivor is in a cage of atonement, perks like Decisive Strike do not apply when a survivor is taken out of a cage. This is very important to know. Uh, perks like borrowed time do not apply. Um, things like that. So this is very vital to know. Um, another thing to keep in mind, when you're caging, when to cage, when to not cage, um, is to be mindful of where survivors are. So let's say you get discordance across the map. And you just downed a survivor, uh, and they are tormented, and you're on the other side of the map. So you're on one side of the map, right? And survivors are all the way on the other side of the map. You know this by discordance. At least two of them are all the way on the other side of the map, and you're on one side with your survivor who you just downed. You have the ability to send them to a cage, but you probably shouldn't. Why? Because as soon as you un as soon as you cage them, they will be immediately uncaged because of the survivors who are right there, and they will be healed and they will be back in the action much quicker. So you really want to try and be intelligent about survivors' locations and where they will be sent off. So when you're caging a survivor, they will be sent to the opposite side of the map every single time. The next thing I want to talk about is double hitting off of a hook or off of a cage. This is something that is very powerful and very punishing that Pyramid Head has the ability to do. When a survivor is pulling another survivor off of a hook and you are right there, if you time it properly, you have the ability to hit both survivors at the exact same time. Um, not easy to do at first, but what I do when I'm doing this is I will wait when the survivor is unhooked, their feet touch the ground, wait half a second, then shoot. So, and this is off of a regular hook. When a survivor is being pulled off the hook, they will, their feet will touch the ground, wait half a second, then shoot. When a survivor is being pulled off a cage, it's a little bit different in the timing, but it's a bit similar. When their feet hit the ground, you wait just a little bit more than half a second and shoot. Um, it's, it's, it's a very small increase in time that they have iframes, but it's not substantial. Just wait like a fraction of a second more when they're being pulled off the cage. So, that's something that uh, is very powerful, um, and uh, you know, 
you can really punish survivors who like to unhook uh, in front of your face. As soon as you hook, they run up and unhook. You can punish that very easily. So now that you have a good understanding of your power and of the abilities at your disposal, now we can look at add-ons. So, Pyramid Head is a killer who doesn't have the most OP add-ons. Um, he does not have any add-ons that inflict exposed or, or anything like that. A lot of Pyramid Head's add-ons are just kind of quality of life so the main thing that i recommend starting off with are not add-ons that increase your range the best so the best add-ons for you to use would be add-ons that increase your range like the wax doll uh the burning man painting and the black strap the black strap increases your range of punishment of the dam by 0 0.5 the wax doll increases by one meter and the burning man painting increases by 1.5 meters so at the base range of eight meters with the burning man painting and the wax doll you can increase your range to 10.5 meters which is very considerable um this will cover the entire um length of shack um so it's it's very very nice and a very good quality of life uh add-on to use i don't recommend starting off with it though i don't recommend starting off with it though because you're gonna want to feel your range you're gonna want to feel how far you can shoot and and have a firm grasp of how that feels the base eight meters you're going to want to use that and and just and get used to that then once you are used to that then you can start increasing your range and and feel that out um other add-ons he has that are pretty good um, are add-ons that increase uh, how long um, the Rites of Judgment trails uh, are left, how long they stay in the environment. Um, so we have uh, the Cinderella Music Box, uh, which increases the how long trails are left in the environment by 15 seconds. We also have the Mannequin Foot, which increases it by 20 seconds. So the trails left in the environment will last for 75 seconds by default. Um, they will vanish if they're placed near generators, uh, near exit gates, hooks, uh, and near the hatch or in the basement. So you cannot leave trails everywhere. Um, it wouldn't be fair if you just left trails by a generator and oh, they're there and you know, whatever. Um, they will disappear in certain areas, uh, but you can leave trails, uh, under pallets, windows, things like that, etc. And these add-ons will help with that. So you can increase your, uh, the time the trails are left in the environment by up to, by up to 120 seconds, which is, which is pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, two minutes. That's a that's a considerable amount of time in DVD. Uh, so um, I recommend something like this to start off with. Uh, but it's it's up to you. Again, I don't recommend uh, just running in with the range add-ons. I really recommend just getting used to his default power. Um, other add-ons that he has. Um, Misty Day Remains of Judgment. Uh, this will increase the duration of Killer Instinct when triggered by Rites of Judgment. So when a survivor runs through your trails, uh, Killer Instinct is the red flashing thing that comes up. 
um, it'll remain by one second. These are actually pretty nice um, if you're chasing a survivor through... Excuse me. If you're chasing a survivor through shack um, and they're behind a wall and they step into your trails, you can see them and potentially shoot them through the wall. And having that extra second can really help you with that. Um, so don't, uh, you know, these, these add-ons can be good. They can be pretty good. Uh, then you have uh, recharge add-ons like the Valtiel Sect photograph, which decreases time required to recharge Rites of Judgment by four seconds. Pretty good. Um, not his best add-ons. Um, it doesn't take that long to recharge um, your, your power. Um, and a lot of the time you can just, even if you have only a pinch, you can just hold it, stand still, and, and shoot. Um, but it's, it, it's a little boost, so it's, it's not, it's not too bad. So that's basically his greens and his yellows. Um, we can look at his, uh, purples and his eeries. So the Scarlet Egg is, uh, add-on that increases the duration of Killer Instinct, uh, by 1.5. Again, similar to the, uh, Valtiel sect photograph or sorry the um the misty day uh but you get that extra 1.5 so you can combine the scarlet egg with the uh misty day painting and uh it, it, it is significant again not super super strong um but it, it does help you and i do actually recommend starting off with maybe something like this um Either these or the duration add-ons. I recommend starting out with stuff like that just to kind of help you out. Um, then we have the rust-colored egg. The rust-colored egg is a pretty good one. I like to use it. Um, Rites of Judgment Trails inflict blindness for 60 seconds. Um, basically, it's just a, a simple add-on that can confuse survivors, especially if they're solo queue. They won't be able to see... Uh, auras of their teammates or uh, you know if they have aura reading perks they won't be able to to see that uh, for 60 seconds which is it's pretty nice it's not overly powered it's not super stupid crazy but um, it's just kind of a fun little add-on to run it'll confuse survivors and and uh, yeah um, the next one we have is the Lost Memories book. This is probably one of my favorite uh, on Pyramid Head. Uh, Rites of Judgment Trails inflict Oblivious for 60 seconds. So a survivor who is oblivious uh, will not be able to hear your terror radius, uh, but more importantly, uh, they won't be able to see your stain. So because they're only inflicted with Oblivious for 15 seconds, if you're at a jungle gym or something like that, they will no longer be able to see your stain. Uh, so you will be able to just run through and they won't be able to predict which way you're coming from as easily. Um, obviously, you can turn your back when coming around a corner uh, to hide your stain and stuff like that. Um, but the Lost Memories book, again, it's just kind of an add-on that will confuse survivors and maybe it'll give you the upper hand something like that uh the crimson ceremony book this used to be his worst add-on because of how little hemorrhage used to do for you so before hemorrhage would only make survivors bleed more and their blood was more visible that's all that hemorrhage used to do now hemorrhage will um survivors who heal but don't heal all the way their healing progress will rapidly uh deteriorate uh so the crimson ceremony book is actually one that is pretty good um it, it went from his most useless to one that's actually not too bad um so yeah uh crimson ceremony book is uh, a pretty good one now <laughs> now at least um now we can look at his Eries. Uh, so we have the Obsidian Gauntlet Goblet. So the Obsidian Gaunt Goblet is uh, an ultra rare add-on. 
that grants undetectable while standing on a rights of judgment trail. It's not super strong, but it is something that can very, very easily confuse survivors. Uh, you can combine it with a Lost Memories book for, for the memes. Um, so what you can do is you can, when you're running the Obsidian Goblet, you can leave trails to generators and around, and you can walk on your trails and you will be undetectable. Uh, survivors will not be able to hear your tear radius coming in. Um, it's a pretty fun add-on to mess around with. Again, it's not super strong, but it's it's pretty fun to mess around with. Yes, you can leave trails and then be undetectable and be like Insidious Bubba. That is something you can do. Um, pretty silly, but uh, yeah. Then we're going to look at uh, the Iridescent Seal of Metatron. Now, this is actually probably one of the worst Eeries in the entire game, in all honesty. Um, it's, it's not very good. Uh, so, when sending a survivor to a Cage of Atonement, the auras of all survivors suffering from torment are revealed for six seconds. So, when you're sending a survivor to a Cage of Atonement, very rarely will every other survivor be tormented. Survivors uh, typically are smart, typically, and won't run into your trails very easily. Um, so, yeah, you, you won't often get a ton of value from this. Um, it used to be broken, and you could see the aura of survivors in the cage that you just sent across the map, but they've fixed that. Uh, so it is not <laughs> not very good. This one, I don't use it a whole lot. Um, I actually on stream was trying to get value of it. I think we played like six or seven games with it. And I only got value once, once out of seven games, roughly. So, um, yeah, it's it's not too great. You can just set it on and hope you get value. But, uh, yeah, um, so that's kind of a basic rundown of all his add-ons. Uh, so, yeah, not a, not a whole lot of super OP add-ons, but some a lot of quality of life kind of things, little boosters here and there, and stuff to kind of help you out. Um, so you can really take your own pick. Again, when you're starting out, I don't recommend running uh, the range ones. I recommend getting used to your base range of attack and running perks like uh, um, like the Mannequin Foot, uh, Rust Colored Egg, things like that. Things that just kind of give you a boost but don't affect the range of your uh, power then as you get better with him, you can swap it on. Okay, so now that we have a good idea of what perks to run, and we understand our power, and we understand our add-ons, now we're gonna look at um, proper mindset. So, Pyramid Head is a killer who, as we now know, have has the ability to double hit, when a survivor is unhooked and when a survivor is uncaged he also has the ability to send survivors off in a cage and meet them there and down them again he also has the ability to bypass ds and bypass borrowed time now what that means is that pyramid head has the ability to tunnel survivors very effectively so if you are looking to consistently 4k if you are looking to consistently win and especially in higher mmr especially once you go higher and higher up in the ranks you are going to have to accept that you will tunnel you have to tunnel uh against some teams um, so if you're, uh, not into that, if, <laughs> if that shies you away, maybe, uh, maybe this killer isn't for you. Um, because of his lack of mobility, his lack of, you know, being able to get around the map, 
um pyramid head uh is a is a killer who you know in higher omr you you have to rely on tunneling a, a lot of the time and it's just kind of the the state of of his killer really it's it's just kind of the way it is another big thing with pyramid head is patience you're going to want to have a lot of patience similarly to any range killer if you are frustrated if you are frustrated and you are agitated you're gonna miss shots so you gotta be just relax and if you are missing shots calm down don't don't get amped up calm down sit back take a deep breath and and you know be a bit more patient and try and time your shots place your shots a little bit better when you load in to play your first game of pyramid head just accept that you're probably not gonna win he's a very hard killer um you're probably not gonna win it's it that's okay that's okay you're learning the game um you're learning the killer just just accept that um and take your time with it don't be hard on yourself just you know, be patient. Don't get worked up. It's very easy to get worked up when you're missing shots. You're like, oh, fuck. Oh, man. Oh, shit. Just be patient. Take your time. You'll get there. Yeah. So proper mindset. Huge. All right. So now, now we're going to go into the final, the final step looping and chasing survivors and how to use your your ability in chases this is the real meat and potatoes here so let's uh let's get into this okay torment creek not a bad map not the not the worst one for me that's for sure not too bad not too bad not too bad right away i'm gonna break this door just because um Okay, so immediately we have discordance value. We know at least two survivors are on this generator. Very vital. This will help us have a good start, hopefully. Hello! Okay, so Yui goes to the pallet. I immediately pull, uh, pull my sword down and we get that hit through the wall. So that was a prediction shot. If Yui was intelligent... <laughs> she uh she maybe could have dodged that but she goes for the uh the vaults there and doesn't get it but you can actually so we can see her her aura because of i'm all ears there oh hello there okay so he committed to the gen we were able to get that hit there now keep in mind when you downing a survivor this attack is just a little bit faster than this so if you have a survivor pinned or if you know that you can get that attack uh always good master flashy saves from elodie here that's huge <laughs> so elodie kind of seems to have a bit of a uh, bit of knowledge she's a bit she's not as uh predictable and we get the m1 there Okay. We're going to put our sword down and notice how she the last thing she wanted to do was go through the pallet. A lot of survivors will do that. So if you're coming, survivors will often freak out. They won't want to go through the pallet because they're scared. They don't want to get caught. So uh, we will cage. And since we are closer to this side of the map, she will most likely go to that corner. So we can what we can do, we can cage her. And now let's go try and find her. Because she'll probably be like somewhere over here. And there she is. Elodie definitely knows what she's doing. So we'll cage her again. Send her across the map. She will go over here. And we can meet her over there. So this is just kind of a, a demonstration of like how to easily tunnel somebody out of the game <laughs> so there she is she's getting unhooked uncaged sorry and we're here 
And she will not be able to DS. Body block the pallet. There we go. Now we have spent quite a time, uh, quite a lot of time on Elodie, which isn't really great, but it is what it is. There we go. She's out of the game. Now we can focus Yui. Oh, she had life. Nice. Well, wow. okay. Come to me, Yui. Okay. Now notice how I waited there. I waited because I didn't know if she was going to fake the vault or if she was going to, uh, if, or if she was going to just, just blindly vault. Um, so one thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to wait until you can catch survivors in an animation. Just like w when a survivor vaults, they're stuck in animation. Uh, when a survivor drops a pallet, they're stuck in animation. Things like that. Against higher MMR survivors, this will ensure you get a hit. So, oftentimes, you will want to wait until you see them vault. Don't wait. Don't, don't shoot early. Like, now. That's when we hit. That's when we shoot. Is when we see them vault. Not before, when you see them. Just as they do it. As soon as they start, that's when you shoot. Okay, notice how he was going into that little tight space there. If a survivor is going through a doorway, or a little corridor like that, you can catch them. <laughs> Okay, not sure what Jonah's game plan was there by standing still. <laughs> Alright, so we are on Batam Preschool. Definitely not a map that I would prefer to be on, but... Well, we'll see what we can do. We're gonna come and, uh... Dwight has a crow? <laughs> okay, she fakes the vault. Nice. Move that out of the way. Very nice. Okay, she's <laughs> she's being very unpredictable. But when survivors are unpredictable, it can also make them predictable. If survivors fake if survivors fake a vault at every vault, then you can expect that and you can kind of prepare for that. So now we know that that thing is going to be faking a lot. So when we come to a pallet, we can almost expect her to not just blindly run through it, right? Okay, nice hit there. Good prediction. We'll give a uh, thing an M1, send her on her way. And then we'll cage uh, Yun here. So yeah, a, a good thing to keep in mind is that survivors aren't just gonna blindly vault pallets if if they're going against you, a pyramid head. They're not just gonna blindly vault pallets. They're not just gonna blindly run through pallets. So you can't expect them to just do the same thing every time. So you you have to read survivors and adjust how you're going to play depending on how they're moving and the things that they're doing, right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> she dropped on the wrong side. So look at this. We have uh, about four hooks. None of the survivors are tormented because we just haven't had we, we just haven't had the chance, and they've been avoiding it. Um, so this is a big reason as to why uh, the uh, the seal of Metatron Eerie is it just it's not it's just not that great. Um, because a lot of the time, 
you you don't have the chance to to cage and survivors avoid torment. Now we'll get some Amalir's value here. Nice. Huge. Huge. There we go. We get the down here. And I'm going to bring her right here so you guys can see. What? The beautiful Mori. Look at that. So most likely they'll heal up and try and come for the rescue. Uh, which if they do, we can see the, uh, the double hit. Wait, no, you! So there we go. And that's all it takes. I'm all ears value. Beautiful. Jill runs into a wall. <laughs> Now let's see. Will she vault? No, she doesn't. Wow, okay, that was huge. So that is something that you can note as well. While you're midair, you can't shoot, and if you are holding rights of judgment, you will lose that if you go, go to drop. But just as you hit the ground, you can uh, activate rights of judgment. So something to note there. That's exactly what, what got me that down. So, we don't know if Nia has DS or not, so what you can do is you can put a trail down, pick up, and if she does have it... Okay, she doesn't. Uh, if she did have it, we would drop her into the trail. And she would be tormented. So, yeah, I think we've covered just about everything. Um, so with all of that, um, if you guys learn from all of this and you put this into practice and, um, you know, go your own way, use these tips to, to help you get better. Remember to be patient and uh, have fun and uh, always be respectful to your fellow players. And... Um, yeah, so I, I hope this really helps you. If it did, uh, you know, be sure to like and comment and s subscribe. Uh, I'll be sure to make some other videos on uh, different killers, how-tos, and stuff like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, take care.